Some of us are great and we'll get done by 12 p.m. What's going on? Um, North Carolina, South Carolina, maybe South Carolina, Southern climates. We're pretty much used to using traditionally liquid systems to handle manure from swine facilities. So that's typically a under slat flush, pit recharge, recycle systems. Basically, what this means is if we're going to put up a swine facility for handling manure this manner, we're going to have to have some treatment system. Traditionally, that's been what we do. We really got to get that water treated down to low solids, low volume, things like that. So we look typically more than recycle volume. We're looking at large volumes of water used to get the water out of these barns. That's our traditional system. So we got to have this adequate treatment. So we can even say these traditional southern systems that we use go together. It is probably common in Oklahoma and places like that. We have some changes since the turn of the century. We have new expanded regulations. In fact, we've got some of the most stringent in the country in our state. This is making it very difficult, in many cases, impossible to locate a traditional system. That's one issue. The other thing is we have requirements for clay and synthetic liner. We do. There's nothing wrong with that. But the data of the whole of our cost. So that's the pressure against the traditional system. Increased grain prices. We could pay a dollar, dollar twenty-five a bushel extra to keep grain from the Midwest and the Southeast. Our companies are going, we've got to deal with that. We keep keep, keep growing up, buying so much grain from the Midwest. We're not going to cut the Midwest all. We've got to deal with that because these uh, transportation costs. And the other thing is the increase in grain cost. And this is just some summary data I worked up for my uh, USDA Economic Research Service. 2000 to the end of 2012. Between increase in variation in all nitrogen sources, even in a, a phosphorus and potassium, basically huge changes since the end of 2000. When we start looking at what some of our uh, economists are looking at in terms of crop budgets, it's not uncommon for us to see 30 to 40 percent of the crop budget to what it costs to produce a bushel of grain to just be fertilized. So that's been a lot of our companies looking at deep pit barns again. If you did away from them, didn't want to hear about them, because it's easier to locate them. If you've got a roof over the over the window or when you have a hurricane, that's kind of handy in the focal plant in South Carolina. We're also concerned plant nutrients from the north, and we're really pushing this idea. These companies are looking at this. We're looking at pushing the idea of integrating swine and grain production. If we're going to have more grain grown locally, we need to swine food. So that's, what, that's why we did, I did these calculations. I really worked with my industry in the state, my growers, and I'm going to share just the basic result with you guys. You know, we wanted to compare what is the value to the crop in a very simple way. Comparing the traditional system to the deep fish story system that they're looking at. And we really brought it down to a realized economic value of the number. And we're going to look at the university spread. And I'm just going to look at corn. I got several assumptions here, you can look at them later, but probably soon the 160 bushels per acre, all these assumptions will change, you know, the answers a little bit. Um, we know we're going to get part of the beat of the game as well. We're actually not going to worry about soil. We're focusing on the plant. We're looking at probably even the agronomic grade as well. So that's very simplistic to know that. But we're trying to see the big picture. Here's the price of this Here's the key thing, two definitions. One is what I call the inventory value of a plant nutrient. If I explain this to our growers, if you've got a pit or a lagoon or what have you full of manure, it has a certain retail value today, whatever the cost pound per, you know, dollars per pound it is to a five k growth, it has a retail value today. That's your inventory value. But, the realized value is only what really counts for the agronomic grant the crop. Again, we would do in more detailed situations, we would take into account uh, soil test results and that kind of thing. But again, for simplicity, we're not going to do that. So, if you over apply phosphorus, if you over apply potassium, we're not going to over apply nitrogen in our example, you basically can't count the value of this crop. It's considered a waste. So I look at you know, would you buy 
100 pounds or 100,000 pounds of nitrogen and waste 25 percent, you can buy a bunch of bottles and waste half of it. Would you really do that if you went out the I'm going to give you the results. I've got all the nitty gritties in the slide, but I want just two cases. Four house farm, 880, 880 per house, split finishing. That's 3,520 hog spaces. We'll do the same thing for a deep pit example. Obviously, there's more than four barns in that stream. They had a lot of farms with more than four, about four barns. And then we're going to look at the results for these two sets. We've got, this is data from the actual situation on our farm, volumes and nutrients, and I've got the availability factors. If you want to go deep out and look at that later, you can. But we want it down to this. How much in, this is land available in, phosphorus, potassium, potash rather, am I producing here? What am I getting per year? We also went through and assigned to the assumed value, and we made a long story short, that a year's worth of getting water in this particular case is worth about $14,500 for about $4.12 per hog space. That's the inventory. It's just sitting there. We can go through it, you know, spreading calculations. It's only 38 acres. I'm sorry, you don't produce grain for 38 acres. You know, you've got to be about 1,000 acres plus to even be considered a grain farm. So, they're not even in the game for this. And we have to look at how much of a you know, balance based on the end, uh, look at how much goes along with the rise from the fossil and potassium. But it boils down to this. We go back and count. Here's the value I can assign to the stuff the crop really needs. In this case, it's almost $290 per acre. Okay? And then we also take into account the value of the waste use. This is the take home number. We only irrigated corn, uh, liquid water on the corn. We're only getting 76%. People say, well, that's good. We get 76%. Yes, yeah, but you're wasting the rest. You're actually over plenty of bottle. We do it on phosphorus, which we can actually do pretty well with a traveling gun. I'm up to 59 acres. I'm still not a great farmer. I've got some. Uh, Decent amounts of nitrogen, but not enough of the crop. We have to have, you know, take the credit calculation, figure out what I need. What it boils down to the, on this one is, in this case, I only wasted 2%. And actually, this particular case was unusually high in, in K2O as related to the sludge. You can saw all the stuff coming from the sludge. It may have been removed already, it's still hanging around the water hole. That's essentially 100% utilization with a small amount of nitrogen in later. But basically, that's a, I've got to spread on top of it if I want to get all the value in the car. So if we look at this quick summary, I'm going to do this 313 on nitrogen, 404, it could be 412 based on fossils. But the problem with this is we have sludge. A lot of our growers forget about it. Well, I got 10, 15 years of sludge in the hole. Now I've got to find a place to put it. Now they got plenty of row crop land. That's one problem. That's the other part. We did the same song and dance with some sludge data. We're going to assume direct injection. Inventory value is 256 per hall space per year. I'm doing it on an annual basis. And then do this every three years, every five years, we can do that. And notice, it's, it's still a pile of fossils. It's essentially a fossil program. So we're not even going to look at nitrogen application. To make a long story short, if I put that slug down based on fossils per corn, I'm still going to have to add other nutrients. So I'm getting 100% of the bag. In other words, I put it out there at an agronomic rate or less for everything that's in the slug. So, summary numbers. <coughs> Uh, in for the water uh, sludge for fossils, 569, everything on fossils, 664. But I take the same form, take the deep dip. Again, I've got some information here, volumes, that kind of thing. Then we'll remember mineralization rates and stuff. Notice there's a whole lot more pounds here. Definitely see the concentration of nutrients just looking at stuff like this. 
and we're looking at a couple of hundred, couple of hundred thousand dollars of inventory value of fertilizer. Twenty-eight dollars and ninety-five cents for all of them. Get more egg reserves till 296. That's a good deal. I need more food to get right now. So I'm trying to make more grain and salary. Got some excesses. Again, spread your base on nitrogen. I got 79% utilization. Spread on phosphorus. I get 100%. Actually, again, we're looking at acreage. For now, these four houses are going to help support 665 acres and 160 acres. That's the kind of thing we're looking for to grow. If we get down to it, go through the credit, just look at the significant amount. But if you really want to grow grain, you don't want to put all the nitrogen out and free plant anyway. So if you've got to be a real grain farmer, that's not a problem. So a couple of income ideas. Did we'll, we'll, you look? I'll hold my head over. We'll get done. Phosphorus, we're ready to get to 100%. Okay. I didn't go on, but. <laughs> Anything that everybody in the country should look at, you can treat the phosphorus like Economically, it's one of the most valuable things we have. If you really want to get to make the best utilization of the rural from the economic value, and the individual local will move these numbers around. We're seeing major change. We're looking twenty eight dollars and something for hog space for the spray system on property, and only six sixty four for the abuse. So it's kind of no wonder a lot of our swine industry is looking at you know we want to integrate swine production and grain production, basically get a synergy. And this idea of phosphorus based application isn't as bad a thing as we thought it was. It provides the most economic benefits. Then? Uh, Any question for John? Yeah, John, your uh, nitrogen inventory has in the uh, barn. For, uh, well, one's in the barn. Okay, but um, so in our dairy systems, maybe only half of that will actually get to the field. We have all these ammonia losses. Doing transport, land application, so do you take that into consideration? The question was is looking at the effects of walls in the barn. That's a good point. And uh, application in the soil. Well, I've got my, I have a fully fluid. I've got my availability from all the internal seed, my own operation rights, and I'm working in for a year, and back on what I use. But I think even in the question in our state, we never start as extreme. It's actually used for all. But our law requires that if you sample and use the data on an actual material in the So if I have a new system, I have to use sample or part of our law. I have a little bit of sample here too. If I'm a new board, and I have to take a new material from the outside. If I'm looking at a slide over the media, they have to have at least one sample. If they don't know, they'll do more than that. Yeah, but your inventory started in the lagoon. Well, or it started in the wind because that's why I'm sitting there in the I don't worry about what's in the water in the wind system. No, but by the time but uh, by the time a unit of nitrogen in your inventory in the lagoon gets to the soil, you may only have half of that unit left. No, but we're doing what we actually is my analysis. Are based on sample as applied. As applied. Yes. That's a good idea. And I think now that the EPA is going to apply the That's what we're doing. So that's the way we do it in our state. You can say as it moves from storage, as it moves from the bar now. If it's literally from the house, as it moves from the house. So uh, uh, your lagoon systems conserve nitrogen so much. Less efficiently than your, your pet side of the house because why? Well, the new system is not concerned in any nitrogen. If I was a fly through here, one of the points on the slide is when we start our new system, we're treating this stuff away. We're blowing off the air from the lagoon. So I only have a fraction of what I can have 
if I compare the story system, that's more concerning. Are there losses in the fit system? Yeah. But our, our application to be able to this sample is as as the line. In fact, we'll, we'll have our producers take samples during the application. Or if they're agitating, we'll be while they're agitating right before they apply and they catch it on their application. And how to do it, like, if you have a direct action, you can take it and form a detail. So, yeah, the business system is wasting a bunch of life. And uh, they saw the live volume, they moved it all out. So, this is all, we're not starting in the back of the hand, we're starting with what we're actually applying, what we're actually applying, what we have on that farm. And that's actually where all our farms are. Last question. Yes. <clears throat> so your analysis, you were considering the difference in application costs between these two different storage systems. Because no. with the lagoon, there'd be a much higher application cost because you're, you're transporting more water. And question, when I look at the difference in application costs in terms of the lagoon system, I'm asking to take a point of water. In those of the lagoon systems, it's going to be from the storage into the lagoon system, and you'll need to be a center of traveling. There's not a truck cost in the farm. In fact, you can't do that. You don't put out. That's actually one of the side issues with the system. And I got to have the land on my way to the farm. It's just a little bit of 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 a little